Hey guys, it's Rush. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the channel. This video today, I'm doing anti-airs, anti-air DP. It's been asked a lot on my videos, it's been asked a lot on the stream. It's been covered to death on YouTube. Many YouTubers have covered it. Um, I've covered it before. Um, but this video is different because I'm going to talk about the different input methods of the anti-air DP, some of the challenges and a better training exercise to use to get the anti-air DP. The thing is, people will say, oh, well, I can do it in the lab. I can't do it in matches. It's basically two things. It's because you're too afraid to mess it up in a match. And also, you're practicing in the lab probably wrong. So you're not practicing essentially match conditions. But we'll talk about that at the end of the video. So make sure you choose Bison as the opponent, as the dummy, the training mode. I'll explain later why. But let me just talk through the input methods first. So first you have the standing DP, which is basically from a standing position, you do forward, then down, down, forward, or quarter circle forward. I actually do forward, quarter circle forward to get the DP from a standing position. The DP will come out. Is that input method? That's used where you're walking around and you just want the DP as quick as possible from a walking position, in my opinion. There's a crouching DP. So a crouching DP, you do down, down, forward, down, down, forward, medium punch. Do it quickly enough, the DP will come out. The reason you use this is because if you do a DP from a crouching position, your hurt box is shorter, meaning the DP will... You can do the DP that way later, giving you a few extra frames before that jump attack actually gets close to you. It would connect if you were standing up, but crouching, you've got a smaller hurt box. So that's basically where you're jumping, and you're essentially stationary. If you're already crouch blocking their jump, you'd probably do it from this position. I actually don't use this DP method very often, if I'm honest. Probably walking around all over the place and dashing all over the place. So there's that method as well. And then there's two cross cut DP methods. First method is the um, autocorrect cross cut. That's where you don't have much time to move around, but you still want to anti-air cross cut DP them. That is just, you can do it from the, cr the crouching position. You can do it from the standing position. It's just where you do a DP input um, to, you do it forward facing, but it actually comes out the other way as the opponent crosses over your head. The other cross cut DP method is the half circle back method. Half circle back method is where you walk under them and you do a half circle back and do your punch or kick button to activate the DP. And it will come out, it will cross cut DP if you do that. Don't get too pet up on the details. It just, the inputs overlap for a DP, it comes out, just just use it. And that's all you need to know. You'll use this method when you have ample time to spot them jumping and you want to deliberately force a cross cut or you want to ensure that it's a cross cut, you know, an obvious cross cut. So you walk under them and then you do the half circle DP to get the cross cut. So that's the four styles of DP. That's the four most important ones in my opinion. I'm going to get Bison to jump around the screen now. And I'm going to call out the different DP styles that I use against the jumping. So that's a normal standing DP, nothing special there. Another one that whiffed, that should have been a cross cut. That was the walk under, the half the half circle. That was meant to be a standing DP, standing DP. Do a crouching one. That's a crouching one. Uh, autocorrect. That's an autocorrect, there you go. So you, you can actually see if I stop fighting from jumping. Look at the input. That DP I did facing right, but you can see it cross cut. It auto corrected and it came out facing the left. It actually anti aired him as he went to the left hand side of the screen. That's a quick demo of the four styles of DP. I've explained the situation to use them in. Now I want to talk about some, the main challenge actually, not some of the challenges, the main challenge. The main challenge is, I find, with DPing, anti air DPing is. Committing to the anti-air DP when you're walking. When you're walking, especially if you're walking back, go from a back position to then DP is much more difficult than it sounds. I think the fear is, is that you're already committed to walking back. So in your mind, this is just from my experiences when I was learning the game. I feel like when you're walking backwards and they jump, you feel like you haven't got enough time to then do the input and DP. And I understand that. It happened to me quite a lot where I just hold the jump in, I just block it. Um, that's a training exercise in itself. You must practice the DP whilst you're walking, uh, especially walking back. You've got to get used to, I said, Bison again to jump. You've got to get used to 
DPing whilst you're walking backwards. And it, like I said, it's, it sounds easy, but it's not. It's actually tricky to do. You must get used to DPing when you're actually moving, even even forwards. And and that, I find when people say they can't react to the jumping, that's what they're talking about. They can't respond to the jumping once they're already already moving around. So that is a challenge, and I don't think it's spoken about enough. So you must practice that. Same goes walking forwards. I think there's a mentality where it's like I'm already walking forwards. I don't want to eat this jumping. But you must learn to do a DP whilst walking forwards as well. The thing with this is, and you must remember, because you're already walking forwards, you've already input, you know, a portion of the DP. You've already input the forward input. <laughs> you've literally done forward as part of the DP. So all you need to do is, is just do quarter circle, uh, yeah, quarter circle forward. And your DP, sorry, I didn't mean to cross cut there. And your DP will come out. I turn the recording off now. Just watch my inputs. I'm walking forward. I've just done a half circle or whatever. And DP comes out. It stores the forward input. That's it. So you must practice walking back DP and walking forward DP and recognizing the spacing as well. So that's the major challenge that I think is not spoken about. Discussing the training exercise. Um, so what you'll do here is, is you'll do um, three three recordings. I would start off with two first. Start off with the jumping. Start off with, uh, I forget which attack, which one's the attack. That's the jumping. I think this may be the attack. Oh, sorry, that was on. Let's see. Let's see what he does. Dash. And okay, so we don't want dash. Turn the dash off. We want the jumping. So we want Bison to do, specifically Bison, to do a jump in and down forward heavy punch. And the exercise is to whiff punish the down forward heavy punch and to anti the DP. But you must be moving. You must be moving around at the same time. Whiff punish, down forward heavy punch, and anti air the jumping. That's the exercise. And just do this until you feel confident in covering both options. And I would say, don't focus on the jumping. The jumping is, you will have to at the beginning, but try to focus more on the whiff punish. Because that's the harder one. Mm, I say harder. It, that's quite a slow slow move, so it's quite easy to whiff punish. But I think that's where the mentality should be. The mentality should be that the jumping is so... You have so much time to react that you want to focus more on the whiff punish. In my opinion. To do that, and then when you feel really confident in doing that, Add the third option, which is the dash. Again, it, I think Bison's the best person to use, the best opponent for this exercise. Now the dash, try and check. Anti-air when he jumps. And remember, he's going to do the, yeah, do that. So you want to cover three options by checking the dash. You want to whiff punish that. you want anti -air. and that's the exercise that's a drill i'll be honest i'm not that good at this i don't i don't do this enough but this is a very powerful exercise in itself not just anti airs but this is the exercise you must do to master those anti airs i would say look for the dash and put more more focus in the dash then a little bit of focus in the whiff punish and don't think about the jumping try and react to the jumping as they're in the air rather than looking for it because the jumping is very slow you have a lot of frames to react in comparison to a dash or a whiff punish. That's it. That's the exercise. That's how you should be training anti -airs. You don't just solely work on the anti -air. Work on other options that are thrown at you whilst you're training to throw you off the anti -air as if it was a real match. So that's the video, guys. Yep, that's literally the video. Four methods. The the challenge of trying to DP when you're when you're moving. 
that's a technique in itself you need to learn. And that's the train exercise. Start off with two options, maybe switch to another two options, maybe do jump and dash. And then when you're confident with all three, well, you feel you're confident with doing the two, add that third option in to try and manage the three. And that's, I don't know, that's, in my opinion, the way to master the anti-air. The, the, the anti-air concept at its core level, that's how you work on it. And do this, I say all the time, practice, practice, practice. It won't click in weeks, it won't click in months. It will take a long time. But the longer you do this, the more you'll master this technique and then you'll have the sickest anti-airs. Well, not the sickest anti-airs. I have the sickest anti-airs in EU. I, I claim that title, but you'll have amazing anti-airs. Trust me, it'll work. But you've got to put the time in, you've got to master it and you've got to continue practicing it. Never a day goes by or a week goes by where you you shouldn't be fine tuning, you know, this and apply it in matches. Don't be scared you're going to whiff the DP. Just go for it because the more you commit to going for it, the, the quicker you're going to master it. The more you shy away from doing it, the you're only hindering yourself in terms of mastering the DP, the anti-air DP. So yeah, like I said, that's the video. Any questions, any queries, give me a shout, guys, and uh, I hope that's been informative. All right, cool. Catch you later.